He can't. That's why you need enemies, so you can prove out the peace and the love of God. Amen? So let's, uh, let's be people that don't look at people as enemies anymore. There are spirits on people that cause them to act stupid. And you're a great. <laughs> Just go with that. Amen? This is the easiest. <laughs> And when it's you acting stupid, just saying, it was the spirit. It wasn't me. All right. All right. All right. So storms on the norm. Everyone goes through trials and tribulations. Right? Is that true? Yeah, you, you guys know how the ebb and flow of life is. All right. However, those who remain steadfast in God's word have the advantage of patiently and enduring, knowing that God gives them victory every time. There is a victory. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a contest. You guys know that, right? But the, the deck is stacked in your favor because of where you sit. Now, we'll get to that in the scriptures, but there's a, there's a possibility thinking that should exist in you that nothing can defeat me as long as I stay the course. Amen. Amen. I was just online looking at this guy in a hurricane blowing through North Carolina. He goes out on an old Coast Guard platform, and he's over there with his beach chair enjoying the view. I'm like, it's online right now. You can go look at it. And CNN was showing him because he was on the helicopter platform of old Coast Guard tower way out 34 miles out in the sea. Just kicking back, enjoying the storm. I'm like, I don't know. Is is that the picture that we need? That maybe we just got to let things just ride out in our life and then we'll be okay? Maybe. I don't know. Most of you guys from Hawaii like beef first. My doctor told me, not too much beef. Try chicken. <laughs> well, none of us in here likes to play chicken. Yeah? All right, so maybe you just got to let the storm blow through. Amen? And keep your strategies, and I'll give you some today. All right? Now, if you're going to get the victory every single time, how I many you know that the victory is the victory? It's sitting there. But there's some delay tactics that the enemy has to have you maybe lose your mind a little. Lose your friends. Lose your money. And I think that's the real tactic that you got to really uh, watch out for is that when you're going through something, he's trying to pick apart things that you're not even aware of. He gets you so upset or angry or emotional that you forget that there's some stuff underlying that he's taking away from you. Ha. Huh. So maybe you should look at all of your battles, all of your storms in a different way. That maybe there's another thing that he's trying to do to you. To squander your future. All right. All right. So as you read again, without the word, these storms will wreak havoc and attempt to blow you away. And not only do they try and blow you away, they try and, again, blow all the underneath. Because if you look at this hurricane that blew through Florida, when the waves hit the shoreline, it erodes under the road. And then the road falls in. So you may be thinking that you're standing on firm ground, but the underlying currents have all eroded everything under you. And later on, you'll fall in. So you just got to be strategic. You got to be smart, all right? So if we're going to read these notes, just kind of look at yourself. Don't look around the room or look at the one that you came with. Because the tendency is always to like nudge, nudge, like talking about you. (laughs) Always like, "Mm." and ladies tend to have sharper elbows than men. (laughs) So you got to know, all right? In your notes here, know what to do when the storms which are otherwise known as trials and tribulations, you got to know what to do when they come. Now, in Matthew 7, now Christians must know how to stand against the storms. In Matthew 7, right, and if you're following along, just jot these down, right, verse 24. Now, this is Jesus. How do we know it's Jesus? It's written in his blood. No, I'm just <laughs> They highlight things. Certain Bibles highlight when Jesus says something. So if you're reading from this side, hopefully you can see. And prayerfully you can read. All right. Therefore, whoever, and you're a whoever, hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, you know, pre-cross. Hallelujah. It tells you certain things. After the cross, these things were solidified. So all of you in here, there is no failure or no possibility of failure if you are in Christ Jesus. The only thing that can stagger and stumble is your mind. And we've been teaching this mindset trips for like 
I don't know, six, seven, eight years now. So if you just join us, you, you're going to get up to speed pretty quick. I repeat myself a lot because some people are, are like that. They need to be uh, reminded every day. All right. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall because that's kind of what the enemy wants to do. He wants to erode everything under you. So it looks bigger when it falls. We all watch news, and when we see these rich people's houses along the coastline fall in, we're like, oh, ah, they're rich. They can afford. They get insurance. Well, how many of you know that you have not only insurance, you have assurance that Jesus is there with you. He will see you all the way through. There is nothing, and I've been dealing with a lot of people that have been losing people lately. Uh, even if somebody, if you fail in the world's terms that somebody died, we always look at that as like, oh, poor thing. Well, how many know that that's the great victory? Because we all go there eventually anyway. Some go earlier, some go later. Uh, some days we all want to go earlier. <laughs> some of you, today was that day. You want to go now. Well, <laughs> you, we all have those days. Amen? And we just got to maintain and stay the course and you'll be fine. And what are the sayings of Jesus? What does Jesus tell us to do? What does he tell us? Basically, if we rest in the finished work of Christ at the cross, remember his last three words on the cross were, it is finished. That means everything before had come to an end, and now we all have a new beginning. So all of the promises are not just yay, they are amen now. They are firm in us now. So, and so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. Why were they astonished? Because they had never heard anyone talk to them in peaceful terms. Just say, no worry. It'll be fine. Just do what I tell you. It'll be okay. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, people who struggle in life are being taught by people who struggle in life. Amen? How many of you have been in church before you came here? My condolences to you. Anyway. Because you are going to hear a lot of different kinds of preaching on authority and dominion. But yet they come from a person who's trying to preach to you hope rather than standing on firm foundations. He's not teaching you authority and dominion. He's teaching you how you can have authority and dominion rather than walking in it already. Now, if you want to really catch up, you can tune into Spreaker or iHeartRadio. Look up my name. There's sermons there. You can catch up. You can listen wherever you're at. My advice is don't stick your phones in your ear when you're in public because people are going to look at you funny when you're laughing to yourself. <laughs> okay. But there is a lot of truth in our previous teachings, and a lot of it has to do with the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ puts you in a seated position where there is no enemy existing in that arena. Now, the only thing that can drift off the throne is your thought processes. The prince of the powers of the air can send thoughts your way, but he can't read your mind. He can only read your actions and listen to your words and then formulate an attack to erode you out from underneath. So great is your fall off the throne. He wants you to fall off the seated place, but it's not possible. The only thing that can fall is your mindset. Amen. So high five your name and say, victory is ours. We don't have to work for it. All right. So victory is yours. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to earn it. It's already been given to you. And all you got to do is sit in it and change the way you think. Why did I say my condolences to you if you had been in another church before? It's because they had eroded your authority and dominion. So now we're here. We're reformulating. We're restructuring your foundation. Okay, I'm not saying I'm the best, but I'm hard to beat. Okay, I get a lot of famous rich people that call me for advice, and I got to be the same for them as I am for you. I'm not going to change just because they have some kind of title or name or their fame, whatever. Uh, I'm more inclined to feed our people here in Hilo. So, you guys don't even sound excited. Never mind then. I'm going to Miami in two weeks. Bye. See you guys. 
<sighs> I just came from Dallas. All right, Dallas was beautiful. It was cool. It was like 80, and then not a cloud in the sky. Tony Romo was still injured. It was for the Steeler fans. Anyway, I told some people that, oh, yeah, they were trying to arrange for me to go pray for, for him. And some people say, a lot of people are like, yes, yes, yes. Other people are like, no, no, no. <laughs> and I found out those are Steeler fans, and they don't want me praying for him. <laughs> He has a rotten. No, we want him healed, but not till after the season. I'm like, he is rotten. He is like people healed when you like him healed. So guess what? You're going to get your healing when somebody else like you get healed. All right. It's all fun, right, man? You see, nothing in life is supposed to be so agonizing that you quit. There's days when I want to quit, believe me. But it's because of somebody in here. You know, every time I get these feelings like I want to just, that's it, I'm done. I want to do something else, maybe somewhere else. Somebody texts me, Pastor, I love you. Thank you so much. I'm like, shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, don't keep me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back to the notes, all right? Uh, I love Hilo. Hilo is my home. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people though in Hilo, you guys met them probably. They're kind of rotten. Anyway. All right. So you got to know how to stand against the storms of life. Now, if you're going to sit in this church, I'm not going to give you hope. To me, hope is like swearing at me. Because I like authority. I like dominion. I like being in control. How many of you like being in control of your life? See, the only reason we call it a storm, a trial, a tribulation, a circumstance is because we believe in our mind we have no control over it. We're kind of gambling and leaving it to chance. But how many know that? In Christ Jesus, you can say no. Because even when Lazarus died, remember word got to Jesus? You guys remember this? Okay, so word gets to Jesus that Lazarus, his friend, had died. And Jesus, the first thing he does is sets it in order. He says, this will not end in death. Amen. Amen. So how many know that whenever a storm, a trial, tribulation comes your way, all you got to do is say, this isn't going to overtake me. I'm going to observe and see the hand of God move in this. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to erode me from underneath. And towards the back end of this sermon, I'll show you some of the things that the enemy uses to try and erode you. All right? So just bear with me. Somebody like, go to the end now. That's, if I go to the end, that's the end. <laughs> Hello? All right, we remain, you got to remain steadfast in the word. Whatever word you know, just stand on that. Amen? You cannot allow emotions to get the best of you. Because your soulish realm is really, really feeble. Your mind, your will, and your emotions are really feeble. The enemy knows this. He wants to just bombard you with all this white noise. He wants you to sway yourself off your seated position. He wants to get after you. Now, I know we're in a room full of former snapper. <laughs> snapper. You guys are snappers. That's the hardest thing is teaching people who are formerly snappers to calm down, relax. Because yeah, most of you talk with your hands, not your mouth. We want you to just analyze the situation, see what the enemy is trying to take away from you. Okay? What is he trying to take away from you? First of all, he's trying to take away your sanity. He's trying to get you to sway and say, Lord, where are you? Hmm. Everything with a question mark, right? You guys know it's all from the enemy's camp, all right? God doesn't talk in question marks. That's why when people say, oh, God asked me, what do you want to do? I don't think so. <laughs> why would God leave it to you? We're going to always choose the easier way anyway. Why would God ask? He already knows we're going to choose the easier way. Amen. All right. Just because you're going through a difficult time doesn't release you from God's commandment to love others. And this is the number one thing the enemy tries to erode in you is your love for someone else. Because 99.99% of your problems are people. Some of you are like, what? Yeah, if it's money, it's about people. Amen? Even on the money they put in God we trust. But when somebody owe you, you don't trust God. Hey, you trust you where they stay. Yeah. 
Well, where are we here? Let's see. Okay, so Matthew 5, verse 43. Okay, you have heard, Jesus said, that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? That's why I said earlier, remember, there is no, no peace. with it. Your friends, you don't have to ask for peace. For your friend, you got to ask it from who? There's only peace if you have an enemy. Amen? Who's your ultimate enemy in this whole world? Some would say the devil. Let me just tell you this. The devil was defeated at the cross, so he's not your enemy anymore. Your real enemy is improper mindset and thinking. Okay? Whenever you're given a situation, I mean, you know that God is trusting that you will trust him. That's it. And God trusts you, so he leaves it to you, and he puts his trust in you to do whatever you want to do. How many of you had a choice to come here today? I don't see any knives in your back or guns. So you had a choice to come, and here you are. Are you happy you came? Well, you're happy if it's funny, but if it's addressing a lot of real-life issues in your head, then you'll be like, I don't even know why I came here. Why you brought me here for? You see? So we try and uh, make it humorous because life is humorous. Exactly. Amen. We want you to have peace. All right. So remember, there is no enemies, really. If you do have an enemy, that's your opportunity to work on your peace. Okay. Pray. That's all it's saying. Pray. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Not, don't even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brethren, that's another word for friends. Right? If you only greet your brethren, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do that. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Why? Because God loves everybody the same. There are some teachings out there that God uh, grants favor to those who do the right thing. Let me just tell you, that theory is so shot up full of holes. It's not even funny. You can't hold water. Uh, God loves everybody the same. He loves all his kids the same. There are just some that have mastered their mindset. That's why they're more victorious. All of you in here, let me just share this with you. You may be weak in some respects, but you are strong in other respects. Okay, so what you are strong in, someone else is weak in. Right? Some of you don't have enemies. Some of you only have enemies. Does that make sense? <laughs> because you don't trust nobody. Everybody's your enemy until they prove otherwise. That's kind of what I meant. Some of you like, oh, not evil. Anyway, the theory is some of you are strong in certain things. Some of you are strong in other things. Uh, I meet up with some famous people. They're really good at acting, right? Actors, actors. They're really good at that. I'm not. So I will pay money to watch them on tv or movies right how many of you do that why because they're good at it i can tell you you will know a good actor when you watch them and you hate them <laughs> you ever watch one of those kind of movies you hate them uh, there are people in your life who are good actors and actresses too and you hate them why? Because they're good at what they do. Some of you are good actors and actresses. You came in here and you dressed nice, but I know. I know what you are. But here's the thing. I will pay money to go watch it. And these guys will pay money for me with what I know to share that. So how I many you know, I, all I try and do is make the Bible a real life application. So people will pay for that. Some of you are good at fixing computers. Some of you are good at holding people up at gunpoint. Some of you are good at <laughs> fixing things. Some of you, see, everybody has a gift and a talent. Am I right? And if you say, ah, I don't know what my gift and talent is. Your gift and talent, just right there, you are good at lying. 
everybody has a gift and a talent. You see, in ministry, you find that out. Everybody has a gift and everybody has a talent. In church, some people say, I'm waiting for them ask me what to do. The Bible says your gift and your talent will make room for you. I'm not supposed to have to ask you. You know, in the, you know when I first started this church, I would ask people, hey, what are you good at? They go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know anybody paying for the I don't know talent. <laughs> it's like this. If you see something that you can contribute to a family, you offer that service. All right. Now, for me, I offer the service of healing, deliverance, and well, we study the Bible. So people will bring me all the way across the country just to hear what I have to say when they can go online and listen. But they rather have the live. I mean, people will want you for your gift and your talent. But they would love for that gift and talent to have a smile attached to it. Look at your neighbor and smile, please. I don't care how broken your teeth is. Just your gift and your talent. And how many you know that if you don't like your smile, there's a dentist that you're willing to pay because he has a gift and a talent. <laughs> Everybody has a gift and a talent. Amen. Uh, I know one thing. Like Ken is good at electricity. If I was to go take a screwdriver, go in that box, I know one thing. That would be the beginnings of a barbecue starter. Because I would set something on fire, especially myself. Because I don't have that gift and that talent. Some of you have these other gifts and talents. Your gift will make room for you. A lot of your circumstances, your trials and your tribulations are happening because you are hanging out with people who don't appreciate your gift or your talent. And that's when it gets kind of boring. So you got to come up with stuff to do. And when you got to come up with stuff to do, you all know in high school, if you sat around and said, what do you like to do? I don't know. What do you like to do? That was the beginnings of trouble. <laughs> and think back to those people you used to hang out with, with nothing to do. You don't hang out with them pretty much now. Why? Because you were all in trouble. Now you don't trust them because you got in trouble together. Church is not supposed to be a place of trouble. It's where we eliminate trouble. Amen? So what is uh, some good things that maybe you're good at? Well, offer it to the house. This is a family church. I, I preach this way because Howleys don't know what is Ohana. Okay, so if this is a house, how many know that there are chores in the house, the things that have to be done? How many know that all we got to do is say, well, I can contribute something to that and help out? And then, you know, when you're busy about your father's business, how many know that the enemy somehow finds a way to just kind of ignore you? Why? Because, you know, the old saying, idle mind is the devil's playground, right? So if you're idle, what do you like to do? I don't know. What do you like to do? I don't know. Then you start thinking too much and you have nothing to do. So I'm here to tell you that your gift and your talent will eliminate a lot of your problems. Whenever the going gets rough, get going, right? Go do something for God. You know, there's some stuff in here. You look around, some of you are like, wow, this is a beautiful church. Renovating this place, all the people that renovated, we can see all the flaws we don't want to see. You're just trying to ignore it, but yeah, look at the carpet. Yes. You just look at the floor. Yes. It's nice. Why? Because that's new. <laughs> now, some of you are like, see how troublesome your mind is? It's like, okay, well. I said, look at the floor. <laughs> see? If you're looking for trouble, you will surely find it. Amen? The enemy knows that. When he throws trouble, you will find it. You'll be about that. So everybody's the same. God loves, loves everybody equally. Does God love you? Some of you are like questioning. Oh, I don't know. You're dumb. You're dumb. Jesus said he loves everybody the same. All right, so do you believe that? Well, you're still breathing this morning. In spite of your best efforts to kill yourself over time, you are here in church today. God has saw fit to keep you alive this long. Why? Oh, I don't know exactly. Let's figure out why. Why are you here? Hmm. Well, some of you have this gift of evangelism because you cannot stop talking. That's your gift and your talent. You love to talk to people. Amen. You would enjoy a great career in car sales. But you chose not to. So 
How about growing the kingdom of God? How do you do that? Talk to people about how good God is, not how bad your problems are. If you want to talk about how bad your problems are, pick a fast food joint early in the morning, especially downtown McDonald's, where everybody is only talking about problems. Because the first thing, I used to go there in the morning, and the first thing, I'd be in there eating with a couple of guys, and then these older people would come in, and somebody would come in, hey, how are you? Oh, you're not going to believe what happened to me. And then it goes that way. So use it. Turn it for positivity. Amen. Now in your notes, as you're taking notes, I, I can see all of you writing feverishly this morning, copying these notes down. If you want a copy of this, by the way, it's $1,400, and it comes with free audio recordings online to match. All right. Just because you're going through a difficult time doesn't release you from God's commandment to what? Love others. So how many of you can honestly say you love somebody? Well, the Bible says you can love them, but you got to love yourself first. Stop picking yourself apart. Stop looking at all the things you did that caused you to be who you are today. Today is a new beginning. Yesterday is dead. All right. So two demons in the world are yesterday and tomorrow. Everybody say that. The two demons in the world are... Yeah. I'm glad you all said it pigeon style. Yesterday and tomorrow. Those are your two biggest enemies. Amen. Why? Because this is the enemy's greatest attempt to get you to live in your past or hope for the future, all the while forgetting about today. Jesus said in Matthew 6, to live for today. Everybody cool with that? So you're here today. You came to church when? Today, well, you guys are brilliant. It's amazing. Here you are. How are you going to approach tomorrow when midnight happens? That's when you approach tomorrow. You see how brilliant we are. We're geniuses in the making. Amen. Why? Because you will make the most of today. You're sitting in here right now. How many of you are going through something? I can tell you right now, that's a life in a pit of hell. You're not going through nothing. You're sitting there not moving. All your problems are outside these doors. Amen. So when you walk out these doors, don't pick them up like old suitcase and say, oh, here we go. <laughs> Just say, no, it's going to be different from now on because my mindset will be different because I'm going to trust that God trusts me. See, a lot, of, a lot of teaching out there teaches you to trust God. And then when it all goes wrong, you blame God. I'm here to tell you, trust yourself. Make better decisions. Amen. Who are you hanging out with? See how quiet? Anyway. It just went silent. Dead silent. Right? Because you got a thing now. Okay. Who am I hanging? Are they profiting you? Or are they taking from you? Now everybody, if you came to church with them today, that's a profit. Amen. That's not a loss. So you can now back each other up as you migrate out these doors and say, we're going to do it different. God trusts us to do the right thing. We're going to do the right thing. And that's it. You take one step at a time. Amen. All right. Everybody cool? Yeah, I know. I don't sound like the rest of these guys. Thank God. Because I used to listen to them. I was in Dallas now. It was like, because five-hour difference. It was like three in the morning. So 10 o'clock at night over here, and I was still up because I, I just, I couldn't sleep. So 3 o'clock, I was watching on this satellite TV, Daystar. How many of you ever heard of Daystar, Christian? I was watching this thing, and they were having a telethon. I was like, wow, this is amazing. A Christian station having a telethon. And then I heard the guy say, let's all trust God together. And while we're trusting God, if you would remember us and send us $100 a month, I said, this sucker not trusting God. He's telling everybody what they should give. He's telling everybody to trust God, but he's not trusting God. You guys catch that? That's something wrong. And then he says, we're going to send you this vial of prayer oil for your contribution of forty nine ninety five or more. 
I was like, son of a gun. I underpricing mine on the free one that I make. Because I make free kind, and you can just give whatever you want. I was like, shucks, I could be getting 50 bucks. I'm not trusting God. Anyway, I was watching this whole thing, and the tears, they would, oh, God, help us, God. Keep us on the air. I'm like, if you're going to beg God to keep you on the air, you should get off the air. Some of you agree, some of you are like, oh. Yeah, if you trust God, God is going to pay for it, right? Just say, hey, we get bills for pay. Yeah, watch this next show. No, they got to spend hours and hours raising money. And then they show all the people on the phones. And, and, and Sister Mary from Florida just called in. She's going to give us $1,000. I'm like, shucks. Maybe we should film live and put all of you guys on one phone right over here. <laughs> Then I don't need to take offering, right? Anyway. I just found it kind of ironic. And I was watching this and I was like, oh, good night, crappers. It's 5.30 in the morning. Dallas time. So it would be 12.30, right? So I set my alarm to get up at 8 o'clock. I lay down. And I got up last Sunday now. Church starts at 10. I woke up at 10.23. And I looked at the alarm, and I slept through three alarms. Somehow, I don't know, the devil must have did it. And I got up at 10, 22. I was like, oh, my God. And then I was getting ready as fast as I could. I'm like, oh, my God. I got in a car. I got to the church. It was 10 to 11. And I got in there. And I walked, as I was walking in the parking lot, I was like, oh, wait. These guys are still learning to get out of Pentecostalism. All right, I'm good. I get one more hour. (laughs) That's Pentecostal church. They take a long time. Anyway, I got in there and I I started teaching a message. And God changed a whole lot of people that day. Thanks to your faithfulness. Because I just trust God. A lot of you come up with your little offerings and some of you bigger offerings. And you pay for these trips, I can tell you right now, without a shadow of a doubt, every trip I take, somebody's life gets changed because of you guys. Because if I had to say, please send me to Dallas, please. Some of you like, beg some more. God is good, amen. I'll tell you a little story. A pastor I had met years ago. Uh, I got word from some people, not from the church I was preaching at, uh, from some other Christians that this pastor had had a heart attack and dropped dead. They had revived him, put him in ICU, and he was in a coma. And when I got the call from the daughter, she says, you got to come to this hospital, Methodist Hospital. And I was like, hey, that's pretty close. And you know what? I got in my car. It was one mile away. I was like, okay, I was real close. This guy was... In a coma, they were, the family was crying in the waiting room, thinking they got to pull the plug. They were praying. And then they said, oh, he used to speak so highly of you. I said, used to? How come he not now? Anyway. So I go, and he's in ICU. He has a breathing thing in, and he's in a coma. And then I'm like, oh. I'm like, Lord, what's going to happen? The Lord says, just talk to him. I said, hey, pastor, this is Pastor Tim from Hawaii. He opens his eyes. Hey, Pastor Tim, how are you doing? I was like, they weren't ready to pull the plug. He's like, Ugh. so the nurse came and the, the doctor had to come take out the breathing tube and all of this. And he's like, oh man, I was a goner, but I'm here now. Hallelujah. Hey, how you been, Pastor Tim? It's been a long time. I'm like, you know that your family was ready to send you off down the river. He's like, ah. Oh. He said, you know how it is, we teach faith, right? I'm like, no, me, we walk by faith, not by sight. Anyway, well, he's alive today. He went home the other day, and he's all good. And thanks to you, because if we're, I wasn't there, I don't know what would happen. Who would go yell at him? <laughs> They'll be having his funeral this week, because in the mainland, it's fast. It's not like over here. You got to wait two months for Dodo to give you an appointment to die. Anyway. Over there, it's fast. Within a week and a half, they're putting you in the ground already. So he, 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 uh, he texted me this morning. He says, hey, man, I'm being in church this morning. Praise God. Like, 
Ah, church is better than in the ground. Especially if you got a message. If you don't have a message, in the ground is better than in the pulpit. You all have a message, by the way. All of you are preachers. You know how I know? I just watch you with your kids. You know you. And then you, you Pentecostal. Look at them. Yeah, preach it. Just hang around after church. Watch how people interact with their kids and grandkids. You can see all the future preachers of America right in here. So that guy's alive, and thanks to all of you contributing, that guy's alive now. Amen? The family went from <laughs> to, huh? What? He's alive? I didn't even pray for the guy. Think about it. I, did I say I prayed for him? No, it's like, hey, pastor, this is the pastor. Okay, so where was the prayer in that? So let me just tell you, you are a walking prayer and a walking answer and a walking miracle all in one little package. You, not just me, you. You know why? You're a walking prayer. You're praying, oh, should I go to church today? You're a walking miracle. You got your carcass out of bed. Hallelujah. You're in church. It's a miracle. Here you all are. Some of you had a hard night last night. I know I can see you looking at me one eye, trying to focus one eye. Here you are. Amen. Church is supposed to be fun. I always say, if it's work, I ain't doing it. So I try and make it fun. Some people call me very coarse and very crude in my humor. And too bad. They're not for us. They're not part of our family. They're not part of our tribe. They can go out there, ride the horse. Ooh, that tribe over there. Over here, we just kick back. We smoke the peace pipe. And we enjoy each other's company. Amen. Some of you were lighting up the peace pipe last night. I can tell. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, all good. You can see the ones that were smoking a peace pipe last night. They're like, look at me like. Why would he say that about me? He didn't smoke it to get violent. Hallelujah. All right, you guys all cool? I know it's not your normal church because it's a family. It's not church. Oh, church is a man-made term. It's a family. Amen? Because God created Adam and Eve to propagate a family. Yeah. That's it. So are you part of the family or not? If you're not laughing, you're like, oh, my God. Get out. The elevator goes right up. Just press the button and go. Amen. We're not begging for people to be in this church. Amen. I'm not begging to go anywhere in America. I turn down about 30 invitations a month. I, I pick and choose my battles wisely. Because if I took, oh my God. Even if I took four, I wouldn't be here. Think about it. If I took four invitations, I try and take one, maybe two at the most. Ugh. Miami is far. Dallas is far. Pahoa is far. <laughs> you know this funny? The main I was driving back and forth to do ministry in Dallas. It's like, it tells me on a GPS, 37 miles. I was like, oh my God, I got to drive to Honoka almost. <laughs> oh, that's far. Except when you're going 75 on the freeway, and then it's like 20 minutes, and you're there. Over here, we're like, I got to go all the way on a car. <sighs> you start thinking, I got to go tax at least. Well, here we are. There's no distance too far. You live on an island. Just keep going left or keep going right. And you come right back to where you started. Amen. Yes, yeah, good. <laughs> All right. Some of you reading the notes, you're ignoring me. Good for you. All right. God is our rock. Is that true? Yes. Because remember, anytime you see rock, stone, it's always representative of the law. So God is our law of love. We are on top of it. There is no commandments anymore. They were fulfilled in Jesus' death on the cross. I know some churches are preaching sin and death. We don't. I'm sorry. Why? Because 
Jesus paid for all of that. So we preach love and peace pipes and whatever you do. Amen. So God is our rock. Continue to assemble with other believers. This is what it is. Always come to church. I'm not begging you. I'm just advising you. It's a great idea to come to church because you learn something. I hope you learned something. Amen. You should have learned something already. I'll try and give you something every 8.2 minutes. Anyway. Hear and do the word. How do you hear and do the word? Simple. If Jesus said love one another, what part of that didn't you get? I'm waiting. Love who? You love yourself, you love God as you love your neighbor, amen? So you love your neighbors too, all right? All right, without God's word, you'll be blown away, all right? Christians should mature during the storm of life because they know God's got their back. God got you, amen? He's got you so rapidly, uh, t- uh, well, how should I say this? If you are in Christ Jesus, you are already wrapped tight. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God, the Bible says. So you are wrapped tight already. When the pressure is on, it reveals the real you. Are we, are we correct in that statement? When you're going through something, I know by your text message, some ladies text me, Pastor, how are you today? And I'm like, oh, they must be going through something, but they're okay. Amen? Is that the okay? When I get the text... Pastor, where you stay? And most of the words are W-E-A-U, just the letter U, where you stay. I know you're emotional, so I ignore those for a while. Where you stay? Excuse me? I know where I stay, where you stay. Remember, there's nothing, well, if we say there are no emergencies in Jesus, how many know that you can handle almost anything that comes your way? If you need a backer, say, Pastor, agree with me. Not where you stay. You know how many texts I got from people, not you guys, right? I was in Dallas. People, where you at? I need your help. I'm like, call your pastor. For real, other church people. They, there's a lot of people go to other churches. Should I say this? They go to other churches. They don't come here, but they say I'm their pastor. How sad for their pastor. <laughs> it's like you're in a relationship and you're cheating secretly with me. Anyway, but that happens a lot. The reason they don't leave is because their family go there. Or they're scared what people are going to say. Or they're worried about how they're going to be treated in town. Like, still there then. But don't ask me where I stay. Well, I know where you stay on Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I hope nobody got offended by that. Oh, God, please. <laughs> Whatever. We don't care, right? Am I your pastor? Yeah. Let's take it a step further. I'm your spiritual father, okay, because it's a house. Jesus had to be stamped as a son as he came out of the Jordan. I mean, you know that if we're not subscribing to family, then we got it all wrong already. Amen. So I'm your father. And as a father, I'm going to be encouraging, but I'm going to be firm. And when I say you dumb, don't get offended. I mean that with all respect. <laughs> Stop acting dumb. Okay? And you know where you seated. Just sit down and shut up. <laughs> Let the storm go by and you'll be fine. Amen. You remember the disciples when they're in the boat, right? Let me ask you this. How come only Jesus was sleeping? So people come up with this hypothetical, well, he was sleeping metaphorically because he wanted to show them how at peace he was. Maybe those other guys was up to no good. You ever thought about that? Maybe they were shooting craps up on deck. 
Maybe they were talking stink about somebody. You ever thought about this? Why did the storm have to happen? Um, because they were probably not at peace in their own minds. So something has to happen. Amen. Without the storm, there is no victory. Amen. Because if you notice, Jesus gets up, rub his eye, peace, be still. And it ceases. And then he's like, ah. That's my, my translation. Because so, he says some things, right? Like, oh, why? Uh, how many know if I, if I wake you up in the middle of your sleep, you're going to be kind of yeah, grouchy. Snappy. Because we're in a room full of. So just think of it. You're a Jesus of some sort. If you're at peace and you're sleeping. Like how you was yesterday morning. Anyway. These guys are like alcohol. Anyway. Everybody's not at your best when you come out of a sleep. There's going to be some things said. But I know this. If, they had, if there was a storm, they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. But the Bible doesn't address that. They, maybe they was talking about, I was down cousin Bully's house. And we was over there. And he should have seen. But I was kind of, oh my God, the storm. <laughs> See, storms always take you by surprise because you're not expecting a storm. But here you are as a church family. I'm going to tell you, brace yourself for a storm. Amen. The winds of the enemy come. The prince of the powers of the air come with thoughts and strategies and schematics to get you to think lesser of your seated position. So I'm here to tell you, expect them. Get ready. Amen. Because when they come, you can just say, ah, it's nothing. I tell this story about this old man. He used to tell us, you see this water? And it we were at Hapuna Beach, right? Big waves. He said, don't you guys, okay, you guys see this ocean. You got to respect, respect the ocean. Then he says, you see, and he got in waist deep in Hapuna. And he turned his head. He said, don't you ever turn your back. And he was tossing and tumbling. He got up and his pants was down. I told you guys, you see, don't ever turn your back on the ocean. Oh. We know that storms, waves, different things are never supposed to take you by surprise because you see it. You know they're coming. Just get ready. How do you get ready? Just brace yourself. It's going to be all right. Amen. Now if they, how many of you run out and buy toilet paper when they say get hurricane warning? That should be the least of your worries. Are you really going to do to yourself that much? When a hurricane come, how many run out and buy water when you get hurricane warning? When you get hurricane, get plenty of rain. <laughs> Catch the rain. Anyway, I know one lady, she ran out, she was at the store, she said, I got to buy band-aids. What you planning to do in a hurricane that you need band-aids? You should prepare way ahead of time and say, I have all of these things ready to go. Amen. I got to buy batteries. Okay. I, my grandma, she bought batteries. My grandma now bought batteries. She never even have on flashlight. <laughs> Timmy, I bought batteries, but you can go store buy me on flashlight. My grandma not even Portuguese. She papaya, but she not Portuguese. Hallelujah. Then she tells me, you can buy me a little little stove so I can cook if the hurricane come. I'm like, okay, I go to her house. She has a stove, a little one, but she cannot find the butane. Hallelujah. So I buy her a little stove with another little propane ones. This last hurricane, she, I go to her house. I say, Grandma, you okay? She tells me, hey, you can take your stove back. I found the butane for my other one. Oh, 
Hallelujah. They tell you, fill up your bathtub with water. How many of you heard this one before? Let me submit, th submit this to you. Before you fill up your bathtub with water, scrub your bathtub. <laughs> You're going to drink all that water after you're scrubbing your you-know-whats in there. <laughs> you're going to be the one in the clinic. Hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, and F. <laughs> it's true, right? Do you scrub the bathtub first? Well, I know some of you ladies in here get OCD. Definitely. Oh, my God. You clean with alcohol, too. I know. I know people that spray peroxide on all their bathtub. They want a very clean experience. Yeah. But these are things, if you're going to prepare for a storm, prepare correctly. I tell my volleyball teams all the time, I said, how many of you heard practice makes perfect? How many of you heard that before? That's a lie. Perfect practice makes perfect. practice make perfect mm, we play some of these teams my team is bad i watch how some of these guys coach and i'm like they're bad it's because it's just a teacher that volunteered to coach now i think i'm a miracle worker because the ones i have I don't, all of them are five five or less they cannot reach the top of the net for us to have a winning record is a miracle. It's a miracle. But put a math test on that court. I guarantee you, we blow away every school on the island. Put a 10-page put a paper assignment on the court. These kids are like, it's nothing. Put a ball on the court, like, oh, my God, what is that? <laughs> what is that round thing that showed up? These kids are too much. Perfect practice makes perfect. Amen? Preparation. Perfect preparation will brace you for any storm in life. Amen? <clears throat> All right. Maturity is a funny thing. Christians should mature during these storms because they know that God got their back. When the pressure is on, it reveals the real you. When you're squeezed, mm, when pressure comes. Only the word should come out. You know, the, some of you are like, oh, I get a hard time memorize the Bible. Then don't. Hello? How many of you have problems memorizing the Bible? Come on, raise your hand. Be honest. Come on. I'll tell you why. You get a hard time opening the Bible. Anyway. <laughs> it's true. When I look at some people, they're like, oh, I get a hard time read the Bible. I look at them. I would get a hard time too if I don't open the Bible. I'm not going to look brand new on the pages. No. No, but here's the thing. If you have a hard time memorizing the Bible, then don't. But do memorize this. Love in all things. And you win automatic. That's your trump card. If somebody asks you what you learned when you came to church today, because they will, you say, oh, I went to this church. The guy is off. Anyway, what you will learn over there? What you will learn in church today? Love. Oh. You know why? Love is the greatest mystery in the universe. Amen? So what did you learn today? Some of you, we still got to keep going. Half of you never get it. All right. What did you learn today, boys and girls? Love. L-A-V. Love. You got to love yourself first. How do you love yourself? Here. Forget about your yesterdays. That's the demon of yesterday. If you can ignore your past, you already love yourself. Amen? Forget about your tomorrow because you love yourself today. Tomorrow is automatic. How do you prepare for the storms tomorrow? Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Amen? Prepare your love game. Amen? You guys good at that? All right, tell your neighbor you love them. And don't look down your face like, yeah, yeah, I love you. Well, yeah, some of you like going overboard now, like drug addicts. Right. You love. I mean, you know that the greatest love you can exhibit is the one without words. 
Yeah, actions. Bah. Okay. Here we go. When you squeeze, the words should come out. Part of maturing as a Christian is implementing what you've learned. So, how do you love others? Simple. No, ask them for nothing. You know that love is always in jeopardy when you got to ask somebody for something. Trust God. He'll provide for you. You don't have to ask anybody for anything. Amen. Then people look at you. Then they're going to come ask you. And you know what you do? No. Amen. The most anointed word in the world is no. Christians always have a problem saying no. Am I right? Because we think we always got to say yes. You're not first Hawaiian bank. And they should change their slogan anyway. There should be the bank that says no, maybe. How many of you ever got denied credit from a bank before? That's the bank of no, comma, maybe later. They all lie. Amen. But see, if, if you're formulated in the throne room of God and God has you seated there, how many know that he will provide everything for you? The Bible says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. So that means all you got to do is be in Christ Jesus and whatever you say is going to happen. I've taught you guys that before. How many times, right? In, in Mark, it says, whatever you say, you will have. Whatever you pray. Whatever you say, whatever you pray. Got to match at the voice. Amen? Because you're going to have it. If you don't like the life you've uh, forged, I mean, you, know, you just got to check your words. Check the words of the past. Okay? That's the only thing you check. How you created this. And how are you going to change it from here on out? How many of you are rich? You should raise your hand because that's a today term. You are everything. If it hasn't showed up yet, it's because of your words. Oh, no, look at me like that. <laughs> I'm blocking all your eyeballs. I'm just telling you the truth. I preach this stuff nationwide. I'm telling you, you are what you speak. Amen. If you don't like what's happening, check the words you've used because from today on, it's going to change and become your reality. Whatever you say from today is going to take care of you tomorrow. So how many of you are rich again? Yeah. How many of you are healthy? How many of you are smart? Ooh, oh, oh. Amen. You're smart because you came here. Even if I wasn't here, you came here. You're smart. Man, no matter who's in this pulpit, you're smart. Because they should be preaching what I preach. If they're not, tell them, hey, get off that pulpit. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> With family, wouldn't you tell your family off? Yeah? yeah? yeah. All right. Tell them. I know. Some people say some things from up here and you're like, oh, pastor wouldn't say that. Tell them. No, tell me. <laughs> oh, you're texting me. Oh, pastor. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, my God, pastor. <laughs> Tell them, hey, that you off. Step off. <laughs> See, if we're all honest, then that's real family. Because if, remember this now. How many of you are an auntie, an uncle, or a grandparent? Right? These kids come to your house. If they were standing on your furniture with muddy feet, what would you tell them? So if somebody comes into this pulpit, which is furniture, with muddy feet, shouldn't you tell them the same thing? You like leakings. Get your hell off of there. Because we're not preaching hell. We're preaching heaven. Amen. How many of you are cool with that? I don't pick apart your life of sin. I don't care because it's self-induced nonsense. S-I-N. You're cool with me. I don't care what you do when you walk out these doors. Just don't call me about it. I'll read about it in the police blotter. On a... It's all good. I pray for you all every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you guys got to buy me new knee pads. Okay. All right. Here we are again. When life gets rough, recognize that God's favor is always working. Can you read? Let's read this. Psalm 41, verse 5. My enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and his name perish? And if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes out, he tells it. All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me, they devise my hurt. How many of you have experienced this before? People talking trash about you. Some of you right now, they're doing it. They do it about me too. Amen? 
right? An evil disease, they say, clings to him. And now that he lies down, he will rise up no more. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this, I know that you are well pleased with me because my enemies, oh, my enemy does not triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen, amen, amen. How do you know that? This is David. He's talking about revenge tactics. I mean, you know that all of these things, all of these people, this has not changed. People still speak evil of one another. But the good part is you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians 2, 6. So let them talk. Let them talk. I know you like to smash their face. I know. I know you like run them over with your car and back up and run them over again. I know. But the thing is, you can't do that because you're going to be front page news. Let them go. When you catch them alone, then you beat them up. But other than that, <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying. These are things that we will, mmm. Mmm. Because it happens to me all the time. I just, I, you know, there's a person out there. I prayed for him. He got healed of terminal cancer. He had one week left to live. He got healed. He's going around now telling people that, oh, no. It wasn't Pastor Ted. Oh, it was, it was me. I didn't like. And you know what I just heard? He got cancer again. And I just got a text. Guess from who? Him. Guess what I'm going to do? Crazy. I'm not going to ignore him. Are you crazy? No. Now, because of all of that. Now he's going to have to come to the church, sit down, become a family member. You got to learn now because you never learned the first time how to love. That was pure. You know when somebody gets healed, that's just pure love. God's love heals them. God's love heals them. Not me, not anything. God's love and mercy heals them. If God uses me, that's fine. If I yell, hey, pastor, and he gets up, hey, blah, blah, how many you know that's God's love healed him? Now, these kind of guys, when they get healed and they go out and they start talking all this mess, how many you know now they got to come and plant themselves here? I'm not going to go out of my way now. Amen. Come on, I'm human too. Amen. Hallelujah. You like shop at Walmart or Target? Then you got to go there to shop. You want to shop a healing? Where well, you got to come now? Sit down and shut up. Amen. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just like you guys. People, yeah, words hurt, don't they? Yeah? But our right hand hurt more when we crack, crack them in the eye. Right? But since we can't do that because we're going to risk arrest and prosecution, I mean, you know, we just go and follow what we know and they follow us amen so we understand that at the seated place all of these things are given to us but nobody should take advantage of us anymore so if people talk about you remember don't let them take advantage of you later by seeking their approval because two other demons you want to talk about that are attributed to yesterday and tomorrow rejection and jealousy Rejection. Many of us in this room are fighting through old rejections. And then we exhibit jealousy outwardly. We, we suffer from rejection and we pass on jealousy. So we need to stop. Amen. We, you're not rejected by God, so you should not be jealous of anybody else. Remember, your words change the course of your future. So what are you speaking towards you tomorrow in your today? How many of you are rich and healthy and smart? And hallelujah. Remember, some relationships are doomed to fail because you weren't supposed to be in them in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for a cookie frog. <laughs> okay, back to the notes. I want you to be successful, but you got to want to be successful. Amen. Even when I ran for mayor, people say, oh, why you run for? You lost. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't lose. I did that for the life experience. I didn't do it to get the experience. I just did it because 
There are certain things in your life you want to accomplish in this life, right? Regardless, win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter, right? There are certain things you want to do. How many of you want to go see the Grand Canyon? Well, so I, I flew over the Grand Canyon, and people asked me, did you go to the Grand Canyon? Yep. I went right over. I saw them several times. I flew right over. Like, it's a big hole. Looks like some people I know. <laughs> and people say, you don't want to go there? I did from the sky. I took God's view. Why would I want to go there and go? Okay, so. <whistles> Hallelujah. Some people, they say, oh, you went to Dallas. Did you go to the... Mm. I go to so many places. If I went to every place that people tell me I should go, I would never minister to anybody. And then the only thing I look forward to is food. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So if you tell me about food place, I probably will explore that. All right? Because that's the way we are. Hawaii people, we eat till we're tired, not till we're full. Okay? All right. Now, you guys seeing all of this blah, 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 blah up here? You guys reading? All right. Don't get offended with God. How I many you know you can never blame God? Right? Because He, do you believe that God is your ultimate Father in the universe? Raise your hand if you do. Then how does God create things? Speaking. So you're His child. How do you create things? So don't blame God when you spoke something that came into being. All right? Because that's just your creative DNA. You want something to change? I asked you earlier, are you rich? Are you healthy? Are you smart? Then that's to you now. You got to go do it. So don't get offended with God. Doing so limits his ability to get involved in your situation. Amen. Refuse to allow your emotions to move you. That's another good strategy. Don't get emotional. Right? How many of you know emotional people? Don't they drive you nuts? Serious kind? You're like, oh my God, stop crying already. <laughs> but when you crying, you know like nobody tell you that. <laughs> All right, just, just so you know, okay. Be convinced that God's word is true. The enemy will not triumph in your life. God will uphold your integrity. Integrity is what leads you to victory. Integrity is this, guys. If you don't know what it is, it's who you are when nobody's watching. Okay? Who are you when nobody's watching? Be the same person off as you are on. That's why people say, oh, Pastor, you just tell them, man, straight. Yes, because that's who I am off the pulpit. In fact, I use a lot more creative words when I'm off the pulpit that start with F. <laughs> or should I say they start with PH, like Phyllis. <laughs> because there's, sometimes there's only one way to emphasize a statement. Mother, father. You know what I mean? Funny kind. Yeah, well, because if you're a hard-headed person, you're not going to hear me unless I use those kind of words. And some people say, oh, should it swear? Uh, hallelujah. You know that one thing is, there's no F word in the Bible, right? But there's also no word that says cha. If a dog comes and dumps on my yard, what am I going to say? Cha! There's no word like that in the Bible. So am I swearing if I say cha? Or if... No. I can choose any word I like. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Tough times become testimonies. testimonies. Your victory will encourage others. Now, you can go read that on your own. Luke 21, verse 10 to 19. Go read that. Jesus is teaching something. Now, God's given you a mouth and his word. Speak his word only. All right? If you're unsure of whether you can do something, then Philippians tells you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're unsure about provision, and my God, Philippians again, shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. God promised in his word, not one hair on your head will perish. I got a bone to pick with God because I've been losing some of these things. That I don't know. I must be sleeping. Anyway. I always say, Lord, who caused each one of these to? The Lord says, you, you keep grabbing at it when you. 
All right, Isaiah 4, verse 6, God's tabernacle is your place of protection. I'll show you Old Testament, I'll show you New Testament, okay? God's tabernacle, all right? Now, Isaiah 4, verse 6, it tells you this. Hang on. All right, see here? It talked about a lot of things here. Verse 6 says, and there will be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat for a place of refuge and for a shelter from storm and rain. I mean, you know, it's telling you that there will be a tabernacle. So that's Old Testament. After Jesus said it is finished on the cross, the tabernacle becomes you. You become part of it. And when we go to Ephesians 2, verse 6, which is what I've been talking about. Verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have now taken a seated position in the tabernacle of God. Now go back to that Isaiah 4, 6 again. So what is the tabernacle of God, that heavenly place? What does it afford us? Shade in the daytime from the heat. So is there heat going on in your life? The heat is on. Yeah, sometimes. For a place of refuge and for a shelter from storm and rain. So you're seated in heavenly places. There's nothing that can, nothing, nothing that can overtake you, affect you, bother you. But does it? Yeah, because it comes to your head. The storms are usually thoughts. Amen? The rain is an attitude. It's anger usually. Storm and rain, mm. Hard because if you speak words out, those are seeds that find a destination. So if you're, have, you're having stormy weather, how many know that sometimes you wash away your own seeds? That's why you got to speak what God speaks from the throne. What does he speak? Love. Urgh. You guys never catch that. One person. What did you learn today? Love. L-U-V. Perfect. Earlier it was L-A-V. Love. Okay, you guys cool with that? All right. Back to your notes. We're getting there. We're getting there. Shut your head. Okay. God's tabernacle is your place of protection. Okay, in the presence of God, you develop a different perspective concerning your storms. You can go read Psalm 107, verses 20 to 29. Read this next one. In the presence of God, you will rise above all your problems. Number two, hear from God. Number three. Get your emotions under control. Number four, receive direction. God will bring you out of your distress. Hallelujah. That's real intense stress is de-stress. Anyway, shut up. All right. Even when you're instructed by God to do something, storms will arise. Mark 4. Let's take a look real fast. 435 to 41. You guys kind of know the story I'm gathering Read this. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, first off, would Jesus tell you to do something that's not going to happen? So if he said, let's cross over to the other side and anything happens in between, what's the end result? Because he already set the end from the beginning. We're going to get to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took Jesus along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling up. All right? But he was in the stern. The boat is filling up with water, and what is Jesus doing? So obviously the water was, like, filling up around him. He thought it was a jacuzzi. Anyway. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we are perishing which is what most people do when something happens. Don't you care, God, what I'm going through? Then Jesus arose, grouchy as anything, because what happens next? He rebukes the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? So they, even after that, they were still afraid. Like, oh my God, what's this dude's trip? How the heck he did that? How many know that you are the new Jesus? 
whatever you speak to is going to happen. Why? Because Ephesians 2, 6, he made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you are the new Jesus. Whatever you say now has to happen. You know why they were afraid? Because their minds were weak. You want to succeed in this life, even in Hilo, Hawaii? Change your mind. Change your mind. Don't look at yesterday. Don't look at tomorrow. Just look at today. What did you learn today? Love. You know why Jesus calmed the storm? Because he loved them. In spite of them. Even if he was grouchy. Woke up in the middle of the night. He still loved them. That's why he did it. Amen. And as soon as he says, peace be still, what happens to the storm? Stop. Right? These are life lessons. All right? Whatever you speak to is going to happen. Speak to your checkbook. If you have one, who has a checkbook nowadays? Anyway, speak to your debit card. Bro, feel up. <laughs> and then here's good advice. Stop spending them. Amen. You know, most of you, we cannot see the numbers on your debit card. <laughs> say why. Come on, say why. Because you're swiping, 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 swiping. <laughs> swiping, swiping. <laughs> If you got to go on the computer and input your credit card number and you look at it, you're like, hold them up to the light at an angle. <laughs> you're using your card too much. Amen. What more you need from Walmart? Hallelujah. All right. Storms will arise. Learn a lesson from the disciples. When a storm comes, you don't know what to do. Run to Jesus. Amen. Better yet, you see it in him. Just talk to him. Uh, Jesus, what's up with these guys? <laughs> and he'll tell you, I am that I am. You are Sam I am, but I am that I am. Stop eating that old green eggs and ham. Make wise decisions during difficult, difficult times. You know what the wisest decision you can make in difficult times? Pull away from people. Right? Because remember, they had to come away from the multitudes. And then the storm came and then the storm was defeated. A lot of you run to people. You should run away from people. Right? Because all you're doing is looking to validate a position when you run to people. So stay away from them and just say, no, I'm going to trust this one. All right, because Jesus knew the power of his word, he spoke to the storm and there was a great calm. In the midst of any storm, speak the word of God. Psalm 148, verse 7 and 8. This is Old Testament, by the way, for some of you that don't know. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Now, everything has to obey Jesus. Amen. Well, uh, but you're seated in Jesus, so everything has to obey you speak to the cancer and say no more six months ago the doctors told me i had six months left to live did you guys see me suffer in anything no why because i just said no they offered me chemo they offered me radiation they offered me. i just did certain different supplements and a certain doctor told me i want the list of what you did I said, yeah, but there's one ingredient on there that's not part of the supplements I took. It was the Word of God. Amen. And no, they said I had an abundance of these cells. They were trying to find a destination. They never did. The only destination they found was the toilet. <laughs> Six months ago, they told me October would be a very crucial month for me. I'll probably be battling for my life. I gained weight. You guys gave me too much Cheetos. Promise to God. <laughs> but not enough Cheetos. Anyway, you know what I mean? Too much, yeah. I'm telling you right now, the seventh supplement that I take is Cheetos. I'm telling you, it's the cure for cancer. Right there. Amen. But I'm here and I don't think I'm going anywhere. What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh, you guys don't like me to go to Miami, huh? Okay. Shut your head. The Miami Dolphins need help. They lost to Marcus Mariota today. They need help. Anyway. God is good. Amen. Yeah, so I got to take my own advice. Amen. So I got to do the thing I tell you to do. 
But nobody, I try not to tell anybody. I never even really pinpointed what I had. I was just like, yeah, these doctors. Just because they got on paper on the wall. They think they know everything. Amen. I'm going to make my own certificate. University of Lanakilo. I got on PhD. <laughs> huh? MD. Momona Doc. <laughs> Mama doctor, Mano doctor. Anyway, see, you can defeat anything if you just stick to the program. Amen. All right, all right. Notes. We almost pal. I know you don't no place to go because nobody left. Okay. Because if you had baby party, you'd be out that door so fast because you don't like Mr. Smoke Meat. All right. Meditate on the fact that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Romans 8, verse 35 to 39. Uh, you guys can go there and study that. You guys know what it says. Storms attempt to separate you from God's love. So what did you learn today? Love. L-O-V-E. Finally got it. All right. However, use them as a vehicle to draw you closer to God. You, any storm is meant to get you in tighter with God so you understand His ways. Because... Remember, in the Old Testament, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But because of the finished work of Christ, his ways are our ways. His thoughts are now our thoughts. His words should be our words. So whatever you speak, you're going to have. Amen. Even in the midst of a storm, you are more than a conqueror. How can you be more than a conqueror? A conqueror conquers. But a more than conqueror conquers so that it never comes back ever again. Allow your will to die so God's will for your life can stand. Here's one. Develop the mentality of a conqueror by having confidence in God's love for you. Do you believe that God loves you? Then certain things will arrive in your life. Why? Because he loves you enough to trust you through it. God trusts you to get through it. Amen. Look at all your former family and friends that are not in church with you today. Ah, Palinka. Why? Because God trusted that you would be here today. Amen. Here's the thing. 17 things. How many of you going to, you know, you can take a picture if you like. Let me stand next to them. In the midst of life storms, you must, number one. What did you learn today? L-U-V-O. Love. Love. Can you love? So then you say, yes, I'm going to love. Watch, today, 2 o'clock, somebody going to show up for irritate you. That's how it happens, right? The enemy is going to be quick. He's going to be quick to test your love game. And when that, that test comes, that storm, all you got to do is, ha, 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 ha. Ah, you're so dumb. Yeah, so dumb. Either one of several things, right? Either the person that's coming to you is dumb, or you more dumb for letting them in, or the problem they bring it to you is dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. All of it. All right, be smart. I'm telling you, prepare. I told you earlier, prepare. All right, scrub the bathtub before you put the water. Scrub your head out before you put the love in there. Amen. Remember, you cannot love today if you're thinking about yesterday. Because I guarantee you it is. The person or people that you dislike the most is going to show up. And your bathtub better be clean before you let them bathe in there again. Maintain your integrity. How many know you got to be again? Who you are when nobody's looking. You got to be the same. Number three, pray for your enemies because without enemies there's no peace amen number four forgive and don't harbor ill feelings how do you forgive here's a big word six letter word for forgiving your enemies ignore because mm -hmm. people say forgive and forget the greatest lie in the history of the planet forgive and forget that would be saying, I forgive you if I have Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> Sorry. 
How many of you praying for Alzheimer's disease? No. So God created your brain so magnificent that you cannot forget. So you're going to have to ignore. All right? Don't say that. Oh, hey, forgive and forget. You cannot forget. Why? Because those people were rotten to you. So you're going to have to forgive and ignore. Good. You learned something else today. What else you going to learn? Love and ignore. E E G N O A. Ignore. <laughs> I'm just going to spell it like that now. <laughs> okay. All right. Speak faith. How do you speak faith? Speak to yourself and say, I ain't going to let that happen to me again. That's the greatest faith you can exhibit. I ain't going to let it happen to me again. All right? That way you forgive and remember. Amen. Number six, run to God and his word. Can you do that? You're already there. Number seven, use your authority. What is your authority? This will never happen to me again. I learn now. You know that if you keep repeating the same things over and over, it's just God's attempt to get you to change the way you've been doing it. All right. Eight, imitate Jesus, not Jesus. Because Jesus will go pick fruit. Imitate Jesus, who is our fruit. Amen. Go in the right direction, number nine. All right. How do you know to go in the right direction? Simple. Don't go in the left direction. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you ladies were always looking for Mr. Right? Never happened. Because you should have been looking for Mr. Left. Somebody that you can trust the authority. Remember, a man's right hand is his authority side. You need somebody on your left, ladies, that you trust his authority. If you're trying to be his authority, the whole thing is upside down and backwards. Oh, I tell him, Pastor, how for the one? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, when I bark, he know the bite coming. Sister, put your good deed in. See, that's the kind of thing. You have to trust that man that he will look out for you. Remember, one day, he might have to change your depends, but it all depends on your attitude now. I know, that's kind of crude and cold, but... Amen. Yes, yeah, cool with that. Remember, he might be the one to have to color your hair if your arms don't work. Now, what you going to do? You know you, man. You missing one spot. Anyway, he not going to even brush your hair. He going to be looking at you. <laughs> I'm going fishing. He'll be like, I'll kill you. How? How? I like see. Anyway, I'm telling you real life stuff that happens in this ministry. I'm a, Hallelujah. I had this one lady, she was like always dressed up. Oh my God, even the lipstick was perfect. She started getting Parkinson's. So if she could get Parkinson's, she's going to put lipstick. How do you think? <laughs> she had to trust her husband to do it. And he was like, honey, how? Then he came one day and he had like a couple of pukas on his face. I said, what happened? He said, oh, she had Parkinson nail me. Because I never draw him in the line correct. I said, oh, brother, you better go practice at coloring books. See, you got to get along with people. Otherwise, at the end, you know what's going to happen, right? Nothing because you're all going to be healed. All right. Go in the right direction. Number 10, what is it? Pray for strength. How do you pray for strength? Mm. Prayer is just saying, right? Say and pray, got a man. So just say you're strong and walk in that. Number 11, obey the Lord. How do you obey the Lord? You get these inklings sometimes to do something. And then you don't do them. And then you go, I should have did them. Well, obey the Lord early. 
Number 12, lay down your will. Amen. Your will is your hard-headedness. Don't be hard-headed. Most of you in here can pound nails with your hard head. Now the truth, we can build a house with your head. All right. Number 13, be patiently consistent. You got to be consistent. Okay, for people to trust you, you got to be consistent. Number 14, listen to your spiritual leaders. Who's your spiritual leader? Well, it's whoever you trust to be a leader over you spiritually. If it's me, just trust it. I'll speak to you right from this pulpit. Most of you don't, need, you don't even need an appointment with me. You get all your answers early. All right? All right. Number 15, believe God loves you. Does he? Yeah, you're still breathing. Got to be. 16, trust in God's ability to uphold you. Why? Where did he seat you? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. In his son. At his right hand. Remember, you are seated at God's right hand. All right, so you trust him with his authority. All right, last one. Properly manage your emotions. You guys know how to do that? Simple. When you get a chance to get discombobulated in your brain, don't trust your brain. Amen? The enemy knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. All right, stand up. That's good. You guys enjoy that? I hope so. What did you